Let me read verses 3 through 7 to begin with you here. Here's what he says. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculations rather than stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about with which they, are make, they make confident assertions. Now, if I hadn't done the background study with you, none of this would have made any sense. But my hope is that as you were seeing or reading these verses, you go, ah, different doctrines. He was talking about that. Ah, temple to the goddess Diana or Artemis. And there was this cult and this was going on and all these different teachings and Christianity is beginning to grow and spread and different teachers are coming. And he goes, that's the problem, what's going on in us here. Paul says, Timothy, listen. I left you to be in charge, and you have to tell these people, don't teach these different doctrines. Don't. Timothy, you know the truth. You, ha you have to tell them the truth that is going to set them free. Timothy, don't let them teach this different doctrine. Don't let them devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. You see, what sometimes what people do is they, they, they love detail so much that they say, oh, well, you know, I'm an ancestor of such and such, and my wife is an ancestor of such and such, and you know, because of that, then you know, we're more special than you are, and, and on and on in this. He goes, but they're diving into these different doctrines, and they're speculating, and they're saying, you know, well, we have this relationship with God that obviously you don't have, and you know, we're more holy or we're more special than you. And he says, Timothy, don't. Don't let them do that. In verse 5, he said, the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Let's talk about those three phrases a little bit. A pure heart. In the Bible, the heart is symbolic for the center of our beings, the center of our passions, the center of, of who we are. He says, Timothy, our message is a message of love, and it comes from a heart that is pure, a heart that is right, a heart that has been made righteous by the, the saving and cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. And these people are arguing about these things. They're, they're having these discussions about things. Their hearts are not pure. There are times when I think about that pure heart, and I go, Lord, I don't even know if my heart is pure. How am I supposed to know if I'm teaching what's right? How do I know if I'm doing it with the right motives? You have made me righteous by saving me. You, you have applied the blood of Jesus Christ to my life. You have given me your purity and your integrity and your life. But how am I supposed to live? Since all of this comes, our charge is love that comes from a pure heart. If I'm not loving the people that I'm serving, then it's time to examine my heart. Is it pure? Is it right? The second one, he says, is a good conscience. Now, when I was a little boy, I had a very oversensitive conscience. Everything bothered me. I, I remember um, we went swimming one time. We, we have these swimming pools in America where you pay a small amount of money and you can swim for the afternoon, and it's this wonderful place to swim. And my parents had given me a, a dollar to pay for my swimming. And so a bunch of us little boys, some adult had taken us to this town that had this swimming pool. And I went there, and, and I, I gave my dollar to the young man who was working at the swimming pool. He says, oh, that's okay. You don't have to pay me today. Now, any normal little boy would have said, good. Now I have an extra dollar in my pocket. I can buy a pop or a candy or something. But I said, no, it costs a dollar. I have to pay for the swimming. And he looked at me like, are you crazy? I just told you that you could swim for free. But he took my dollar, and he kind of went, go ahead and go. See, I had this conscience that wouldn't let me be free to do anything. He says, is that what Paul's talking about with a good conscience? No. He says, I want your conscience to be at peace. I want it to be at rest because you have this relationship that is wholesome and that is right. Um, for example, with my relationship with my wife, Trudy, 
There are times when we have great harmony and there are times when we are not in great harmony. And when things are not going well, there's something inside of my mind that says, why aren't you being nice to her? Why did you say that to her? And inside I, say, I have this little argument with myself. Well, she said this to me. Well, she should know better than that. And it's like, my conscience is not right. He says, Timothy, if belief drives behavior and love is what motivates us as Christians to do what we do, then Timothy, part of that is having a good conscience, not a perfect conscience, not a, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up again, but saying, you know what, Lord, my conscience is right with you. There isn't anything that, that Satan can throw against me that would knock me down because as far as I know, I am in right relationship with you. The third thing that he says, he says a pure heart, a good conscience, and third, a sincere faith. A sincere faith. Faith, we, we say the word is trust. A sincerity of faith. See, what these people were teaching was not out of sincerity. They were trying to make uh, their own followers. They were trying to get ahead at their own, at the expense of other people. And they're saying, please follow us. But it wasn't a, a sincere and it wasn't a genuine faith. It says, Timothy, I want you to have a love that is motivated by these things, a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Now, now let me encourage you a little bit. When I read a verse like this, I, I, I would get the impression that I can't be a good Christian because I can't do these things. See, he didn't write a verse like that to make you feel guilty or to say, oh, you're, you know, you should have done better. He said, you know what, when you're in right relationship with Jesus Christ, God the Father and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, he says, this is possible. There is a freedom here. There is a life here. He says, I want you to, to follow me and to enjoy this, this opportunity to be in right relationship with me. He says in verse 6, Certain persons who by swerving from these things, in other words, they didn't have this kind of love that was motivated in this way. They wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding what they're saying or the things about which they're making assertions. They don't even know what they're talking about. Timothy, they're arguing over little details and they're arguing over this. And uh, we have one little expression. Maybe you have the same one here in Russia. Is the old debate is how many angels can fit on the head of a pin? Have you ever heard that one? Do you have the same kind of silly thing we do here too? Well, how many angels do you think would fit on the head of a pin? Well, I, I would say three. And your friend says, oh, no, because angels are spirit. I think that a thousand angels. And so they would spend hours arguing over this. It's, oh, my goodness, Timothy. Don't let them have those kinds of discussions. That's not advancing the gospel. That's not part of the relationship. He says that, that that's not even helpful. In fact, in verses 6 and 7, when it says they have swerved from these, the word behind that is that they have dislocated limbs. That, that something is out of whack. If you've ever seen someone with a dislocated elbow and it's kind of pointing the wrong direction, he says their discussions have led them such a way it's like having a dislocated arm or a dislocated limb. He says that's not healthy Christian living. They want to be experts in the law, but they don't even know what they're talking about. Is Timothy, please. That's not what I've called you to do. That's not what I want you to do. That's not the kind of relationship with us. You see, the, the thing that relates so much to those of us who live in America is truth is under attack. All truth has become relative. Well, if you want to believe this and if you want to believe that, that's just fine. Or, you know what, I like a little bit of what you have to say. I like a little bit of what you have to say. I'm going to create my own faith and however I want it to do. And these vain discussions break out. Well, I like this part of the Bible. I like that part of the Bible. I like this part of the faith. No, 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 that's not what it's all about. Timothy, I want you to step into these discussions and say, no. We cannot allow ourselves to be uh, disconnected and, and dispersed from the gospel of Jesus Christ in ways that distracts us, in, in impossible ways that ends up damaging the very churches in which we serve. Timothy, please jump in and get involved. And now I want to read the last few verses of this first section, verses 8 through 11. And Paul makes some interesting assertions here that are very important for us. So here's verse 8. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient. 
for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, and for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. They go, wow, that's quite a list. Paul, where did you come up with all of that? Essentially what he's doing is he's saying, if you know, and, and every good Jewish person would know at least the Ten Commandments, what you have in this list of particular sins is very similar to those Ten Commandments. You shouldn't murder, the sexual immorality, the, the various things about God. And he goes, listen, you understand why the law was given. In fact, we understand that the law was given for the lawbreaker, not for the one who is going to follow the law. And they go, what do you mean? Let me give you an example. I know that in the United States, there are speed limits. You have speed limits here too. You're only supposed to drive a certain amount of speed. For example, we have miles per hour, you have kilometers, but on our highway that goes by our city, the speed limit is 70 miles per hour. It's a little over 100 kilometers an hour for you. But when I drive 70 miles an hour, there's part of me that goes, if I could just drive a little faster. I don't want to drive a lot faster. I want to drive a little bit faster. So I drive 74 miles an hour because I don't think the policeman will stop me if I drive just a little bit over the law. But imagine if there weren't a speed limit. How fast would I know how to drive? Wouldn't say. But see, the policeman could see, ah, he drove 74 miles an hour. I'm going to turn on my lights. I'm going to sound my siren, pull over, buster. I'm going to give you a ticket. You are driving too fast. You see, what Paul is saying is that the law is given to show us that we are breaking the law. He says, but you know what? Because of Jesus Christ, who fulfilled the law completely, it's no longer about keeping laws because, because nobody can keep all of the laws. It becomes about relationship. That if the relationship is harmonious, if the relationship is sound, we don't need a lot of rules and regulations to try to abide by this, this law. Let me give you another example. TVS is a perfect way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support our educational and outreach ministry today. We exist solely upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvseminary.com. The story was told to me, I don't know if it's true or not, but it was a good story, about this woman who was in this marriage relationship with this man. And this man had a list of things that he expected his wife to do. And I don't, I don't know if the list was there or not, but we'll say that there was 10 things on the list that, that he expected his wife to do. And she struggled with that list for years and years. She felt so, and every time she, she messed up just a little bit, he would say, you didn't do that right. And number three on the list, you didn't do that one right. You know what the rule is. You were supposed to do this way. You were supposed to fold my clothes. You were supposed to iron my clothes. You were supposed to cook my meals by 6 o'clock, and it was 6.15. You broke the rules. And it was just this. It wasn't a good marriage relationship. After a number of years, her husband died. And so he was gone, and she was sad by that for a while. And then she met another man. And they began to date, and they had this relationship, and they fell in love, and they got married. And this man didn't give her a list of rules or regulations at all. They just had such a harmonious relationship that he didn't say, you have to have my meals at 6 o'clock. He didn't say, you have to iron my clothes in a certain way. He didn't ask her to do any of those things. Their relationship was so good and so open and such great communication that she found herself doing the things on her first list without him asking her. She found that she did the things that her first husband asked her to do, but she could never measure up to. She found that she did them for her second husband simply out of love and out of relationship. And I think that what Paul is saying to us is here, he says, listen, the people, Timothy, that are trying to teach to do, do this and do this and don't do this, he says, and they're falling under the prey of the law, he says, that's not what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. 
And these people end up demonstrating how unholy and how profane and what kind of people they really are because they continue to break the law, he says. But when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I think that's why Paul breaks into such worship there in verse 11, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I've been entrusted. Once in a while, whenever Paul writes, he'll be writing about a theme, and all of a sudden he breaks out into a little doxology. He'll break out into this little phrase. And right at the end of this section, I think that's what he's doing. He says, you know, that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have this blessed God. We have this glorious gospel. And we now have a chance to be in relationship with the God of the universe through his son, Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not about following laws anymore. And Timothy, the people in, your, in these churches and these, these teachers, they're coming and trying to add this law and this law and this law. And what they end up doing is showing how unholy and how ungodly they really are. And they're arguing about all this stuff. See, when I introduced this study, I said, belief drives behavior. Paul could have said to Timothy, Timothy, I want you to do this, this, and this. And Paul says, look, because their belief is wrong, it's demonstrated in how they behave. They end up being unholy. They end up striking their fathers. They end up being murderers. They end up being sexually immoral. Timothy, that isn't just about behavior. That tells you what they really believe. If they really believe the gospel of Jesus Christ and the opportunity we have to relation, have a relationship with the God of the universe, he said, they wouldn't even need the law. Just as a marriage relationship that is completely harmonious doesn't need a list of things to do. The relationship is such that we begin to think like the other person and think for the other person. And we think of the other person's good. That's what love is. Love is sacrificial. Love is always thinking of the good of the other person. So Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, the first thing I want to tell you in this letter is this. There is a problem with false teachers. Their belief system is wrong. Don't attack them based on how they behave initially. Attack them on what they believe. Because when their belief system changes, then their behavior is going to change as well. I think that what we're going to see here in 1 Timothy is a surgery, a spiritual surgery. Not just for the readers of this initial letter, but in those of us who now, centuries later, look at these words and say, Lord, am I serving you with a pure heart, with a good conscience, with a sincere faith? Lord, is what I believe about you true? Is what I believe about you an error in some way? If you want to find out what somebody believes, you look at their behavior, because behavior is a good indicator of what we believe. I look at my life and I say, what does what I do have to say about what I believe? And we're just getting started with what that means here. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift 